what to write so people buy, selling your game without feeling sleazy. I know, I get it. This is probably what you think of marketing. It's like a used car salesman. You're probably like a one person shop or something and you just really wanna make a game. You don't really like the marketing thing, but you do it because you know you have to, or maybe you're a part of a five person studio, right? Or you got the short straw and you have to do marketing because you're the nice one or something, right? I get it, I get it. And that's kind of why I wanted to do this talk is I wanted to prove to you and, and show you the ways so that it doesn't feel sleazy like this. It, something kind of enjoyable. And I'm not gonna teach like weird Twitter tricks or what the latest thing is or how to use TikTok. What I really wanna teach you is fundamentals of marketing. It's like 101 basic levels of marketing so that you're not always jumping from whatever's hot this year versus next year versus in two years. Because last year was Discord, this year it's TikTok, who knows what it's gonna be in a year. I want to teach you the real fundamentals, not tricks, nothing sleazy. I just want to teach you really good basics here. This is me. My name is Chris Zukowski. I'm an indie game designer. I've released a couple games on Steam. I'm also a marketing consultant, and I help companies market their games too. This is my game that I released on Steam, One Screen Platformer. And um, according to some of the reviews, according to this guy specifically, I'm uh, the dev that's the most enthusiastic in the history of Steam. So. You're welcome. Congratulations. You're, you're talking to the most enthusiastic dev. Um, I've also had a lot of success on Imgur. I've reached the front page at least four times. And I'm also the author of Quest of Courage. If you haven't heard of it, it was uh, my fifth grade uh, creative writing assignment, which um, actually was just a, just a long journal of, of all the video games I was playing at the time. On the left are my illustrations during this book. Now, um, I it was totally bonkers. I was just narrating my, my hijinks in video games, but uh, the school awarded me the uh, historical fiction award for this book, I guess. Historical, they didn't even know what to do with me. Um, but all that is to say, I've basically been a content video game marketer for the last, since I was 10 years old. So that's kind of the history I bring to you and, uh, and where I come from here. Um, but I also uh, am a marketing consultant. So I strategize with brands and companies on how they can best use their own uh, community to market their games. So these are some of my clients. Now I'm gonna break this down into five major parts. I'm gonna just show you the basics, the 101 level stuff, how does marketing work? I'm gonna show you how to build a marketing strategy so that you're not just grasping at things, not just tweeting for the sake of tweeting. And I'm also gonna show you how to act on that strategy. And I'll show you short tutorials on email marketing because that's my favorite, I love email marketing. And then I'm gonna show you some real life examples of how this all kind of comes together. How does marketing work? Basically marketing is just a bunch of big squares that you gotta fill out. Here's Steam, Twitter's just a giant blank square that you have to fill out. Here it is, this is your email uh, service provider like MailChimp, more blank boxes. Even if you're not writing, even if it's something visual like YouTube, you still have to fill words in. You have to create titles, create descriptions. So basically all of this and all of this marketing, all these different platforms that you might have to enter stuff into is copy. Copy is what goes in these blank spaces. It's just the words that sell. What I wanna to do today is show you how to love this stuff, how to actually enjoy filling in these giant blank spaces with your words. Okay, I'm also gonna teach you one very important rule of marketing, and I think it's something that everybody needs to work on, and it's this. Always have a call to action. And I'll explain that in a little bit, but it is one of the most fundamental things to have. Okay, so pep talk, like I said, it is not sleazy to love marketing. Marketing is one of the best things that we can do to promote our games. And a lot of people hate marketing because they think of it as, co as coercion. But coercion in marketing never works. You can't convince somebody who wouldn't already like your game to like it. The, the goal of marketing is actually to find somebody who's predisposed to like your game and show them and prove to them that this is exactly the type of game that they want. If somebody doesn't like FPSs and you're making an FPS, no amount of marketing, no amount of dollars or ad spend is gonna convert that person. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're really trying to find the right audience and say the right words to them to make sure that your game is shown to the right people. That's all it is. There's this uh, famous quote uh, from a, a famous marketer named Zig Ziglar, and he said, selling is essentially a transfer of feelings. And I think about that a lot when I read a lot of indie game marketing. I, I subscribe to a lot of newsletters and read a lot of tweets, and I, I read 
some copy that's from game developers, well-meaning developers, but they say things like, I hope you don't mind getting this email, or if you're not interested, you can unsubscribe at the bottom, but before Warren, I'll cry. If marketing is a transfer of feelings, what kind of feelings are we transferring here? That's not good. And I'm serious here. Please, let's stop that kind of language. It's just knock it off. It's not helping your marketing. It's not making you feel any better. So really, I'm going to show you the right way to have the right message for people. Okay, so let's talk about marketing strategy. Everything I talk about comes down to the funnel. I mention it in every talk I give, just about every blog post mentions the funnel. It is a fundamental to marketing, and you have to understand it. So I'm going to go real quick through the marketing funnel. The marketing funnel starts with four basic layers, awareness, interest, desire, and action. It's basically a top to bottom guide of how somebody will interface with your game and hopefully buy it in the end. It's uh, as old as marketing is. Uh, here's actually the movie Glenn Gary, Gary Glenn Ross. Uh, this is Alec Baldwin pointing at the funnel. Notice the AIDA. Um, and basically what happens is your goal as a marketer is to find a person that's going to like your game and they go from awareness, not knowing about your game, to being aware, to being interested in it, to being desired, to desire it, to buying it. And so all you have to do is move somebody from the start to the bottom, and then you get, their, get them to buy your game. That's it. That's how it works. The hard part is that there's a lot of steps in between there. So let me show you an example of how this would actually work. So let's say you post something on Reddit, and it goes viral, makes it to the front page of Reddit. The person who just doesn't know about you just discovers your uh, game through this Reddit post. And in the middle of that Reddit post, you say, hey, why don't you join my Twitter feed? So they, they subscribe to your Twitter and they say, ooh, this is actually pretty good. It's kind of interesting what you're posting here. So they follow you on Twitter. And as you post, you link off to your Steam page. And they look at it and they see screenshots and a trailer. And then they really like your game. They figure out that this is the perfect game for them. And so now they desire it. And then eventually your game goes and finally launches, hopefully not at 75% off, but you offer a pretty honest discount. And then they're in it. They are totally excited about your game. You guided them all levels of the funnel and they buy it. They're totally excited and they take that action. That is the funnel. Now, the reason they call it a funnel and it has that kind of wedge-like shape is you just gotta be honest. Not everybody is gonna make it to the bottom of the funnel. Some people are gonna start with awareness, like 500,000 people are gonna view your Reddit post, but only 1,000 are actually gonna go over and follow you on Twitter. And then a fewer number of those people are gonna follow you on, on uh, Steam. And then an even fewer number of those people are going to buy you on uh, buy your game on that, uh, on Steam at the end. So it's a very precipitous drop that you just have to deal with, and it's one of the things you got to get used to with the marketing funnel. So here's the hard part about working a funnel in, in copywriting: is that you'll notice that from Reddit to Twitter to Steam, those are all different platforms from different companies, and all of that is totally different. So you've got to actually get people from one login to the next to the next. It's really hard. And you're going to lose people at every single one of those jumps. And guess what comes in between those? It's good copywriting that's going to get people from one to the next. So let me show you why they follow you. So here's a post that I made. This is the front page of Imgur, and that's mine. The number one post on the front page of Imgur called Most Viral. Um, and what happens is when they see your game on something viral like this, those people are like totally excited about you. They're just going to do that old throw, my, take my money, and then they're like waving it at you. But unfortunately, this feeling is not very long. They only like you for just a few seconds because then there's going to be some other thing they're going to be excited to, uh, about right under you. So you've got to capture this feeling while you can. And what you do is you try and channel that energy of them wanting to throw their money at you. And you've got to channel it, since you don't have a game out yet, to something productive. And usually what you do is you get them to follow you on a different platform. In this case, like a follow on the Twitter. And the way you do that is through a call to action. Always have a call to action. A call to action is just a very clear bit of text that tells somebody exactly what to do next. That's it. Like, it's that simple, but so many people forget to do it. Let me show you. Like these. Like and subscribe, ring that bell, follow me on Twitter. All those are calls to action, and you need to do them to move them off of Reddit and onto your next platform. So you've got to be prepared with what your call to action is with whatever you post, because you don't know what's going to go viral. And if you miss the opportunity, that energy that people have that are excited about you is going to fade really fast, and then you missed out on an opportunity to convert people from that excitement to actually following you. 
I know people say, oh, it's just visibility. This is good. Visibility doesn't count. It's a real waste if you don't capture that energy. Okay, so like I was saying, those call to actions are what take people from Reddit to Twitter, Twitter to Steam, Steam to buying. You need call to actions as part of the mortar between all these bricks. Okay, I cannot emphasize this enough. I know I'm going to say this a lot, but always have a call to action. Okay, so let me show you how to build the funnel. This is actually where you're going to get your strategy. Now, there's so many social media platforms. There's a new one every week. If you were to use all of them and to get people to follow you in all of them and you had all the things, you would go absolutely nuts. It's impossible. You can't do it. Even if you could be on all the platforms, your audience wouldn't know what to do. There'd be call to actions all over the place. Follow me on this, then now follow me on this. It's impossible. But understanding the funnel helps you rationalize this stuff. And let me show you how. It, it, it actually makes more sense once you see it in the funnel. Now, there are platforms that are very good at the top of the funnel, which is awareness. It's going from people who don't know you exist to actually at least having a concept of your game. And those platforms are like Reddit, Twitter, Imgur, Twitch, if like a big Twitch streamer follows you, or Facebook. All these are great for when somebody doesn't know you to kind of know, just to be aware of you. That's when you can go viral. Note, all of these are going viral platforms. Um, the problem with these are they're ironically not very good at mid to low funnel, where you're converting somebody who's like aware of you and they like you and they want to like take that action to go buy. All of these platforms are actually pretty terrible at getting people to act. So let me show you what's next. In the middle of the funnel, which is interest and desire, those kind of mid funnel activities, the good platforms are like Discord, email marketing, my favorite, and sometimes Twitter. Um, those are platforms where you really get to build a community. People follow you, you follow them back, you converse with them daily, come back and forth, and there's a real back and forth. Those platforms don't go viral very often, but they're really good at making people fall in love with you. That's the mid funnel right there. The reason I say Twitter is not very good, I'll show you in a little bit, but people don't actually act very often when they use Twitter. And then the bottom of the funnel, which is action, is just the storefront. It's wherever your game is. It might be Steam, it could be Epic Game Store, whatever it is, that's where people take action. So in this case, this is what my funnel is for my games. Not everybody's funnel is gonna look the same. I like Imgur, I figured that platform out, so I put that at the top, that's my top of the funnel. My mid funnel is email marketing because I love email marketing and my games are on Steam, so that's my action level of the funnel. This is my marketing strategy. Everybody else is gonna be different based on what they like and what's their favorite platform. You should construct your own. Don't just copy this because it's dependent on what your game is and what you like to use. So that's your marketing plan. Just build your funnel based on what you like and what kind of platform fits best with your type of game. So what do you do next? You just yell, buy my game at them. It's easy. Don't, no, don't do that. Don't, please, don't do that. What you got to do is really have a strategy for how you're going to communicate. Now, let me show you what you're going to say to the, the levels of the funnel. Okay, there's three parts to talking to your funnel. Okay, first you got to understand who your audience is. This is a big one. Then you got to build that relationship with them. That's that mid funnel activity I was talking about. And then you got to tell them what to do. So let's talk about number one, understanding your audience. Um, not enough people do this. I, this is the first step. If I get hired by a consult as a consultant for some game company, the very first thing I do is actually just observe the audience that is predisposed to like that game. I try and figure out who their buyers are and really what kind of things that customer might like. So you just gotta put on your like uh, anthropologist hat and go off and observe the user. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, the reason you do that is because if you can state the problem better than they can, they're gonna trust you. This is an old marketing uh, saw that people always talk about, is you really, if you can tell them what their problem is, they're gonna love you. For example, watch this. This is a, you know those old cheesy infomercials? The first parts are always those black and white where people are tripping and, and clumsily doing things. I'm not saying we literally need to do that, but the purpose of those is to state a problem they know you have. Like, I don't know what this guy with the oh no is, but hopefully they just, I think they like dropped their soap or hopefully that's what it is. So they're stating common problems that people have. They just ramp it up to 11 because everybody who's watching them is either stoned or drunk. That's why they have to do it that way. But you don't have to, but you do have to understand the problems that your audience is having. And you might be saying, what, I'm in the video game industry, what problems, video games are worthless. You obviously haven't been reading Steam reviews. People have problems all the time with video games. Just go in and read the reviews. Let me show you what I mean. 
Um, if you read enough negative reviews, you're going to see some recurring themes like can't can change, change the controls or um, I can't change the resolution. People have real problems with video games that are legitimate problems. So this is what I suggest to do. Identify who your audience is and don't just say gamers. That doesn't count. It's got to be very specific. Um, I've studied Steam buyers very carefully. I actually gave a talk on this uh, this GDC. Check the stream. I don't know if it's like down below on the YouTube. It's called Empathizing with Steam, How Buyers See Your Game. But I did a whole study on how people buy games on Steam. And it turns out people buy very specific genres. They don't, they're not very, uh, they don't buy a whole bunch of genres. They stick to maybe three, four at the tops. So what you can use is, is you can use this to your advantage. Basically, what you do is you identify your game genre, be very specific about what genre your game is in, and look at the number one game that is similar to your genre, the big title. Like if I'm making a roguelike, I know it's probably going to be Dead Cells or it's going to be uh, Rogue Legacy. So go study that game and identify a medium seller, maybe one that's not very famous, uh, kind of a mid-level uh, game that didn't sell as well. And then go read reviews for those two games and just see the common themes that show up over and over again and look at the negative reviews and see what they say over and over again. And basically find some reviewers who seem nice. Don't go for the psychopaths. Don't go finding reviewers who have that weird racist frog. Don't do that. Just find a nice reviewer and then message them and then talk to them about video games. They're actually going to be very nice about it. It's going to be awkward, but again, we have a fun job. It's, it's one of the pains we have to go through, right? Okay, so here's how to talk to your audience. Just say what you're trying to do and don't ask them uh, what, if they like your idea. That's not going to work. You have to be very cautious about what you say so you don't taint their opinion. Don't ask what they want. Instead, ask what they've done in the past. People are very honest about what they did in the past and they're less honest about what they want to do because they're going to lie to you to make you happy. That's just because people are nice. And also, uh, so these are some some common questions that I like to ask, like if I'm making a co-op game, say, hey, what was the last co-op game you played? And then that's going to be a springboard where they can explain more and more. And write down everything they say, because you're going to be compiling all these notes. What I do is I make a spreadsheet and I basically split it into se sections, like what do they hate about a game and what do they love about that game's genre? And all these things are just going to be used later on. I'll show you how. So this is where you're going to use it. It's when you build that relationship. Um, the important thing here is your copy is not about your product. It's about a feeling. So let me show you Nike. They sell sports equipment, right? But when you look at this, what sports equipment are they selling here? I, I don't even know. They don't even talk about features or anything. What they're trying to sell is that feeling. And that's what your copy is trying to do. You're not listing features and whether it's a green or a yellow or how good your features are. What you're really doing is you're talking about the benefits. And this is a very common thing in copywriting. What you got to do is break things down and you don't want to list features like don't say my game has 50 side quests. Try and turn that around and think of how it's a benefit. For example, a benefit is every character has a backstory. You choose which one to explore. That's turning a feature into a benefit. And that's what people are going to respond to. Similarly, maybe your feature is dual wielding. Turn that into a benefit and say, oh, uh, you get to improvise unique weapon combos to defeat enemies your way. Really, people are going to respond better to that feeling that you give them rather than that some dumb bullet point feature that you've got. So that's how you really connect with people. And you might be wondering, well, what kind of features do they like? Well, that's where your research did. So one of the things is people, I see this all the time, they kind of write these stories that are focused on them as, as marketers. So for example, I know you went to PAX East and it was a great trip and you had a lot of fun and you learned a lot of stuff, but your audience doesn't care about that. It's like watching somebody else's vacation. So don't write about how you visited PAX East Talk about stuff that your community cares about. They actually care about your game more than they care about what you did to market your game. So be cognizant from their standpoint. So here's some specific tips on how to format your writing. Okay, headlines, titles, these are very difficult to write. They take a lot of time. So let me give you some tips. Look at your list that you built, you know, the pros and the cons that people have with your game and turn those into headlines. So for instance, I'm making a Metroidvania game. A lot of people love to look at those maps. The maps are a very important key aspect of Metroidvanias. So I turned that into a headline, five ways we made the Metroidvania maps suck less. When I read a lot of reviews, people are always complaining about the maps. So I'm gonna write something that's relevant to what they care about, which are the maps. The next part is really building a swipe file. Now a swipe file is just 
a list of cool headlines that you've seen in the past. And every good marketer has their own swipe file because it's sometimes you get writer's block and you need to write, figure out, you need some inspiration for a headline. So I build a swipe file that I have. Now, you probably haven't been doing this long, so you don't have one. What I recommend is go to YouTube, look at your history on YouTube, and all those videos that you viewed probably have a pretty good headline because they caused you to click on it. Same thing with email. Go to your promotions tab and then look at all your Gmail uh, inbox to see if there's any emails that you read. And I bet that that title has a real catchy headline. So look that for that for inspiration. And also don't be afraid to just Google for it. Just search great email subject headlines. All great copywriters do it. It's not a crime. It's not like school where you can't copy. I mean, make it your own, but really understand uh, it's, it's okay to be inspired by other, um, other marketers. Now, we can't talk about headlines without talking about clickbait. It's a very hot topic on the internet. It causes a lot of angst among people. And I feel like the internet, and as, as we as indie marketers, we're a little too afraid of clickbait. Um, we're so afraid of being called, called out for clickbait that we write these super bland headlines, like studio newsletter number six. Like that is super boring. Nobody's gonna open that email. I didn't read studio newsletter number five, so I'm as hell not gonna read number five or number six. So don't write a boring headline like that. Also, new dev blog update, that's also a boring headline. Don't do those sort of things. Instead, do something that's a little bit of dramatic. It's not okay, it's not it's okay to be dramatic as long as you're being honest. Clickbait is bad when people feel tricked. Here's an example. Here's an example. If you wrote a, a headline that says, I'm quitting, very, people are gonna call that out for clickbait, and they should. That's lying to people. An honest clickbait headline, actually, though, which is not clickbait, is I'm quitting. And then I wrote a whole blog post about how I ended up uh, quitting my corporate job so that I could go market video games professionally, which is what I did. And I wrote a whole Imgur post and made it to the front page of Imgur. And nobody called me out for clickbait. It was an honest title, and I told a dramatic story. So don't be afraid of dramatic headlines if they're honest. You've got to be honest with your audience, but you also have to be interesting. So make them pay off. All right, so how about the body text? They've gotten the, the headline, they clicked it. Um, it's really scary for that middle big open block. So let me show you how you should and shouldn't write. So a giant open blank space like that is very intimidating. Nobody's gonna read all that, that much text. Instead, you gotta break it up. Let me show you how people actually read. They skim along the headline. So they're gonna need the first headline, then the second one, then the third line. They like big chunks to their text, like chunking it up into subheads. And then what they do is they go to the bottom because they look for the call to action because they want to see what it's in, what's in it for them. They're like, what are you here for, buddy? What, what are you going to charge me? They look at that. Then once they get to the bottom, they bounce back up and they jump ahead to the section that they actually like. So if they're interested in heading two, they're going to skip to heading two. And then they'll also kind of skim through bullet points. So that combination of subheads and bullet points, you got to use that to your advantage. Let me show you. When people are reading those headlines because they skip them, you gotta kind of construct them like they're one sentence. Let me show you how. This is for a, a, a fictional game like uh, Breath of the Wild. Uh, explore an open world, find secret ingredients, and craft destructible potions. Notice how that almost reads like a sentence, but those are headlines. And then what I do is I'd write expanded text under each one of those headlines that describe that open world or what those ingredients are, because I know people are skipping down the headlines. And this is where you kind of get your text is by, remember that white list that we did where we had the red and the green of what they like and what they don't? Grab those and turn those into headlines. Because what you wanna do is you wanna turn that into what the readers are saying. They're gonna read that and they say, how do you know that I love Metroidvania maps so much? It's like, it's like you've watched them before because you have. You interviewed their comrades, people who are very similar to them. You really know them and then they're gonna trust you. Okay, so you got the body text. Now you gotta tell them what to do also known as a call to action. We always have to have a call to action. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to write a good call to action. Now remember a call to action jumps people between the funnel. It gets them off of Reddit and onto Twitter. It's really hard to move people from one platform to another and I'm gonna show you how. Okay, we're gonna do a live example, almost like English class here. So this is a typical indie marketing headline that I see or a call to action that I see, something like this. Sorry to bother you, I know you're busy, uh, I, but my little tiny stupid game came out a few days ago. Could you just take a look and review help? 
please, uh, a link. This is a terrible CTA. Don't do anything like this. Let me, let's make this better. I'm going to show you how. Okay, get rid of weak sauce apologies. Don't do that. I, this is what I don't want you guys to do. I want you to be very honest with your game and be confident about it. Your game's awesome. So let's just cut that stuff out. My game came out a few days ago. Be sure to take a look and reviews help. Okay, let's improve this. This is good, but not great. Um, you should only have one call to action. People aren't gonna do everything, they're gonna do one thing. So let's strip this down to one. Let's just say my game came out a few days ago and reviews help, and then you provide a link. It's better, but let's show, let me show you the next part. Don't use passive voice. Be very verb focused and tell them exactly what to do. So let me, let's improve that. My game came out a few days ago, please review it. And then you provide that link. Better, better. But see this link? You gotta be very specific with what you want them to do. I always click the link whenever I have a call to action. Let me show you why. So this is Valve's official Twitter, um, and they had a, a post about City 17. And they their call to action was follow the upcoming uh, release of uh, Steam or um, of Alex and uh, of Half Life Alex, sorry. And so what they did was they just provided a link. Now, to be honest, this is a pretty good call to action. Um, so I clicked this link, this one right here, because I'm on Steam. So I want to follow them because I'm really excited for that game. So I clicked that link and it takes it to this page. Now, look closely. There's not a single button on here that says follow. They dumped me to a page that they, doesn't have the call to action that they told me to do. To actually follow this page, here's what I gotta do. I gotta go over here to the store page button, click that button, then I'm on the store page, then I gotta scroll down, and then right there, there's the follow button. That's three to four extra steps that I would've had to take in if I had followed their link. Nobody is gonna do that. I did that only because I'm studying them and trying to understand how copywriting works. So don't do that. Nobody's gonna do that. You're gonna drop off on your audience. What you gotta do is be very specific and dump them on the correct link so that they can do just one simple, simple action to do it. So always test your links to see where it goes and write your copy based on this. So for example, if I wanted to ask them to do a review, say something like this. My game came out a few days ago, please review it. Click the following link, scroll down to reviews, and write one thing that you liked about my game and one thing you didn't, and then provide the link. You gotta be dead specific. I know it sounds obvious, but that's not. You have to do this. You have to be very specific with what you want people to do because they've got busy lives. They're probably at the checkout aisle at the grocery store reading this. So be specific. The other thing you gotta do is add a little pathos to it. I like to tell them why. You've played my game and I appreciate you and I need your help with one thing. Please review it. Click the following link, scroll down to the review section, and write one thing you like about my game and one thing you didn't, and provide the link. Pretty good, right? So finally, add a cool button. And here's why. Remember how I told you people skim at the front? If your link is hidden in your text, they're not gonna see it. So put a gigantic button with a nice verb on there. Review my game. I always put a review first, uh, a verb first. It just gives it that extra punch so that people know what to do. So even if they skim all that text, which I, I know is a lot of text, they're gonna see that review my game and they're gonna click it and know exactly what to do. That's it. That's what we had to do to get a good call to action. <laughs> always have a call to action, always. All right. Part four, short tutorial on email marketing. This is my favorite thing. I love email marketing. It's kind of where my jam. That's kind of what I help other companies do. So if you have email marketing problems, I'm here to help. Um, the reason I like it so much is it's the most effective mid-funnel channel known to humans, AKA this nothing gets more clicks than email in the known universe. I mean, I'm serious about this. Let me show you why. Okay, this was a talk William Pugh did just a few days ago, actually, about uh, his marketing strategies and stuff. And he said email had a higher conversion rate than Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram put together. He's the creator of Stan Stanley Parable, and he knows his stuff. It really works. And I, to prove it, I always go out and uh, research other devs who are doing good marketing. One of them is Forager. It's uh, run by a really great company. They have really good marketing, and uh, they're really kind to share their data with me. So if you haven't, pick up a copy of Forager. It's worth it. They're worth it. Okay, come on in. Uh, they... they They've got about 23,000 Twitter followers and 31,000 email subscribers. Um, and this is impressions. So they tweet and emailed at about the same time. I tracked three campaigns that they did, one on October, one in December, and one in January. Now, the blue bar is how many impressions their Twitter got. 
and the green or the uh, orange bars are the number of email impressions that they got. As you can see, Twitter is awesome because it can go viral. Note their January uh, post really did go viral. Look at that. They only have 23 subscribers, but 96,000 impressions were resulting from it. That is awesome. However, when you look at the number of clicks that actually happened, it's not that many. Email killed them for the clicks. And as you know, exposure doesn't matter anything. You need them to convert. You need them to click the links. So even though it feels impressive that you got that many exposure bucks by actually seeing uh, getting featured or getting vi going viral, it didn't convert. And so as you can see, email actually had a 1.5 times more potent than Twitter. If you combine all those clicks that happened, add them all together, 1.5 times more for email. And it, and it can even get more severe of a difference than that. Okay, so, but if you look at these two graphs, like if you compare them, you kind of start to see the funnel emerge. Look at this. Twitter is great for awareness. It's great for exposing your game to somebody who doesn't know you exist. Just like that viral tweet that happened in January, that brought your, that game to a bunch of people who had no idea it existed, but it didn't convert. That's why I say email is a much better mid funnel and Twitter is much better top of funnel. I do not recommend concentrating on Twitter as your mid funnel because people just don't quick click on Twitter links. They just keep scrolling. So that's why you need something good mid funnel, like either Twitter or I'm sorry, either email or discard are great mid funnel platforms to use. Okay, the other reason I like email addresses is because everybody's got one. You know how I know that? Because to sign up for those other social media platforms like Twitter or Discord or Twitch, what do you need? You need an email address. Here's their sign up forms. Guess what? Top thing, it's always email. All right, so there's three things that I see people do wrong with email that I think is really easy to fix, and these are things how you can improve it. Um, how to get people to join it, how to use an autoresponder, and how to be uh, more personable. So uh, this is the typical uh, email sign-up that I see on uh, Indie Dev's websites. It just basically says, join my mailing list for news and updates. That's boring. Nobody's going to join your mailing list. Or you can improve it greatly by just changing just a few things. And the way you do it is with something called a lead magnet. And a lead magnet is just a little cookie that you give people. Uh, to, it's a little sweetener to have people join it. It's just like that person at the office who has a little candy jar because they like to make conversation. And it's just a little bit of a, a little sweetener to get people to talk to you. And what, a, what these little sweeteners are is little cool gifts that you can give, like a soundtrack, you can beta access to your game, a free version of your game, like a demo, uh, you can do an art book, desktop background, Steam avatars, anything that's free and can be uh, easily sent via like a zip or digitally. You don't want to send off like physical patches or pins to join your mailing list because those are cost prohibitive. It's got to be something free that they can do. And all that does is it gets people off of Twitter and onto your mailing list. Because as we know, people don't quit, click links in Twitter, so it's really hard. And so you need that little bit of a sweetener just to get encourage those clicks onto your mailing list. That's why you need that lead magnet. And what do you do to get your lead magnet to work? You need to have a call to action. Always have a call to action to join your mailing list and to mention that sweetener. And here's an example of one. Um, today I'm proud to announce a free demo for my game Gunminer. Click the following link, enter your email address and I'll send you a copy. And then you've got that link to actually go join your mailing list. This is a fake game that I've, I've got going here. This is not a real tweet that I actually sent, but you get the idea. It tells them what to do and where to do it. So when they click that link, a lot of people will just dump that link to their general website and they gotta scroll around their website. Don't do that. Create a special page on your website just for the sign up for your email list. Here's an example of a great one. This is from the game Nimbatas. Uh, this was a demo that they gave away for joining the mailing list. This page right here generated 50,000 email list subscribers. And the great thing about it is you can notice there's nothing else going on this page. The only thing you can do on this page is enter your email address and click that nice call to action button that says get the demo. You want it very clear because you don't want them to have to hunt around on your page to find where to put their email address. You want it to be so dead obvious that they can't miss it. Okay, next part is something called an autoresponder. There are very few indies who actually use an autoresponder and it's a shame. It's one of the most important things you can do with email marketing. Now, an autoresponder is a very simple thing that's built into like every single email program. If you've got MailChimp, you're gonna have the autoresponder built in. You can use it. As long as you're paying for it, if you've paid for MailChimp, 
you've got the autoresponder, so you should use it. Let me show you what it is. When somebody joins a list, maybe let's say on a Sunday, you can set up your mailing list to automatically send an email like on the next day. And so what you do is you pre-write email one, you say, send this to them a day after they join my list. And then you write a second email and you program it to go off the next day. And then a third one, the third day. So basically what you do is you're pre-writing a bunch of marketing messages. And so when they join your list, they're receiving those pre-programmed messages. And it's just an automation that really boosts the rest of your subscribers. So let me show you why this is so important. You're like, what's the big deal? Okay, remember how I told you those people that maybe like discover your game and they love your game and they're like totally excited. They're like, take my money and you don't have anything good for them to do and you don't have them to buy anything. There's nothing they can do and that energy just kind of dissipates. It just kind of fades away. That's bad, right? So you follow my advice and you say, you turn that energy into a call to action and you get them to like join your mailing list, right? So they join your mailing list and then you don't send them anything for like six months and it slowly fades away. Even if they're on your mailing list, if you don't email them, they're still gonna forget about you and lose track of who you are. So what you gotta do is you gotta capitalize on this and you do that with an autoresponder. So when they join your mailing list, they, are, they wanna throw their money at you, you say, join my mailing list, what you do is the next day you hit them up with another email that you've pre-programmed. And what they are, they're in that honeymoon period. They're super excited about you, your game. So you want to keep that, that flame alive. It's like if you just started dating somebody and you, didn't, you, you went on a first date and then your second date was nine months later. You don't want to do that. So what you do is you send this email one. And then the next day, email two. And look, they're still excited. Email three, they're even more excited because you're sending them good stuff. And then four, they're just like just throwing money back at you. Really what you're trying to do is just keep the flame alive for a few days. And what happens is you, they remember you more than just that one flash in the pan where they signed up. Because the worst thing is six months later, they get an email from you like, who are these people? I don't, I don't remember. That's why you need to do an autoresponder. Now, the other thing, the other trick with autoresponders is you got to set up what's called an open loop. Auto, open loop kind of comes from um, screenwriting. And uh, if you remember the, the show Lost, every episode of the show ended on a cliffhanger. There was the smoke monster, and then there was that, that shaft that had the vault, and they found what was in the bottom of the vault, and when, then when they got to the bottom of the vault, there was this guy pushing a button, and why is he pushing a button? And every episode just kept chaining these just more and more impossible stories. And that's what you kind of want to do with your email. So maybe at the first email, you say, stay tuned tomorrow, because I'm going to tell you about the game that almost closed the studio. And what happens is people are like, oh my gosh, that's a great story. I want to hear about that. And so when email two comes in and you tell that story, they're more likely to open it. And then you end two on a cliffhanger, so they're more likely to open email three. It's just like those really addictive shows where they just end on a cliffhanger so that you open the next one. And it just really boosts your open rates and makes people love you even more. So it's a really helpful strategy that nobody really does. If you like this stuff, if you're interested in email, I gave a talk last year on email marketing. Probably if you just search GDC Chris Zukowski, you're going to find it. Here it is from last year. I went a whole half an hour just on email marketing. It's really helpful. Okay, so the other third problem that I have uh, with a lot of people's email lists is something called impersonal writing. And I get these emails from indie studios and they just sound like boilerplate, like they just converted their press release and they just converted it to a newsletter and sent it to me. Like Leaping Lizard Studios is proud to announce the forthcoming edition of our next game. Uh, you can just hear that voice. First off, I know you're just like some dude in your, your spare bedroom coding out your game. Don't call yourself a studio. Be, be honest with what you are. You're just like one dude, right? Be, be that one dude. Don't claim you're a studio. It's more, it's more impressive if you're just one guy. Second, don't use the word forthcoming. Who uses the word forthcoming? Instead, you got to think of email as like a personal communication with two people. I, I, I subscribe to Chrissy Teigen's newsletter, which is actually a pretty good newsletter. You should subscribe. It's got some good stuff going. But the cool thing about it is if you look at my inbox here, it looks like I'm getting a one-to-one -one person email from Chrissy Teigen. It's like Chrissy Teigen is emailing me, right? You've got to use that to your benefit. You are going to appear in somebody else's email as one person. So it's like you and your fan are talking one-to-one. -one. So write it that way. Like here's an improvement on that. Hey, Chris, it's John, you know, from Leaping Lizard Studios. You want to see my new game? See, it sounds like he's talking to me. And that's how you should write your email. Don't say, hey, y'all. Hey, guys. What's up, everybody? That's not. It's one-to-one. -one, so write it that way. Okay, that's email. I love email marketing. I'm going to show you how this works in real examples and how I kind of build funnels and, and really work my marketing across multiple platforms.
Okay, so here's the first one. Um, these are copywriting examples. So this is me, my game Zombie King, and how I love Imgur. So um, remember how I, I always study users, and I know the audience of my games. I make pixel art games, they're retro in feel. So I talk to folks who, uh, who like my type of game, and they really do like the history of, of medieval times, and they like retro games. Um, so they really kind of have that spirit. Um, and what I did was I realized that in a trip to Germany, because I, I went for a trip, that there was this castle that had a great story. And that's what inspired my game. And what I did was I researched into like where this castle came from. And it turns out it shows up in all these retro games, ironically. So like all these old Nintendo and Super Nintendo games have Norse Weinstein Castle in it. And I thought, what a great story. And so what I did, oh, this is also Zelda. Look in the top right. They put the little Norse Weinstein Castle. It's so cute. Okay. And so what I did was in my game, I had my artist add Norse Weinstein Castle to my game cover. So I kind of have this continuity and this callback to the retro games. And so I wrote an Imgur post all about that, about my trip to Germany, all the games that had it. And guess what? It made it to the front page. And so thousands and thousands of people on Imgur were totally jazzed about this great story that I had. And what do I do with that? You know, what? Actually, don't. No, don't do a call to action on Imgur. Imgur hates call to actions. You got to know your platform. So don't do a call to action right away on Imgur. Basically, I let it sit there for a little while, and then I added the call to action. Uh, you don't want to put a call to action immediately on Reddit, on Imgur or Reddit, because they'll downvote you right away. And so what I did was I just made it more personal and more so like they were helping me. So this was my call to action on the bottom of the post. I'm actually looking for some beta testers for it right now. If you're interested in my game, sign up here. And then I had a link, and it goes to a, a, a landing page where the only thing they can do was sign up for my game. So that's an example of using a call to action with a top of the funnel thing like Imgur. Okay, so this is example two for email marketing. This is a client that I um, consulted for. Uh, this is a Minion Masters by Beta Dwarf. They hired me to help them with their email uh, setup. And so let me show you exactly what I did for them. Okay, so, the, so Minion Masters is a free to play collectible card game. Um, and the weird thing about um, uh, free to play games is their funnel is actually kind of upside down. So the awareness phase is actually Steam. And if they're interested in the game, they can just install it because it's free. So uh, installing the game is very top of the funnel. And then they've got a lot of middle funnel stuff where they're actually playing the game. And if your game is cool in a free-to-play game and they like it, then they're going to take action and actually buy something like IAP or Minion Masters that has a season pass. So that's what you're trying to do is you're really trying to get people within the game to go down to the action phase. It's tricky. Like if you look at their game, it's a very complex game for new players. And so what I did was, I did what I always do, which is I talked to the users. So I looked through their forums, I talked to their community, I talked to uh, their moderators, I talked to their community manager, and I really found some pe folks who are kind of representative of their community, and I had one-on-one -on -one interviews with them because I wanted to find out how did they get into the game, what do they dislike about the game, what could be improved about it, and how, how, what they would recommend if I were telling a new player to get into the game. And so I took tons of notes and I set up what uh, was a strategy for them. So we knew that there was a complex game with a steep learning curve and retention is decided in the early days, right? So we don't want them to bail. And we need to establish that relationship because Beta Dwarf is very good with their community. They're very nice people. And I really wanted to emphasize how good they are for their community. And the interesting thing is this is a PC and Xbox game. So it's not like a mobile free to play where that game is always in their pocket where they could play it at the checkout aisle. There's big times where they may play it in the morning and in the evenings, but all during the day, they're separated from the game. So they can't check in on it. So those were the kind of challenges I was trying to solve here. And here's the solution I came up with for their email. So of course the awareness phase is Steam. They find the game through Steam and then they join it. So what we did was we embedded a signup form within the game and what they would do is get free codes by uh, what it was like a splash page when they first signed into the game. And because it's a collectible card game, we could give them cards through little codes that we sent them. Um, and what that happened was once they signed up for the email, we used an autoresponder, just like I said, those open loops. And so they got daily emails. Every single day, they got an email from Minion Masters. And we taught them the rules of the games. And I gave them gifts so that they would keep opening the emails. Because if you get an email and you know that there's going to be a gift in that, you better believe you're going to open it. And so then I also introduced them to the studio and taught them who the people were behind the scenes. So let me show you an example of an email. Now, this is one email. It's a big, long, awesome email. 
but I can't show it very easily on a, a slide share. So I kind of sliced it together, but this is just one email that I sent. Um, so we've got uh, Stefan, who's the CEO and founder of, of Beta Dwarf. I wanted to put him right up front. You know how it was like, even though they are a big studio, they've got several employees, big team. I still wanted to make it personal. Just like that guy, John, who was in the basement working on his game. I wanted him to be human. He's kind of like the Walt Disney who would introduce the show every afternoon on Disney Sundays. So he's there and he says, hey, my name is Stefan. Look, he introduces himself right up front. And then right away, we gave him a gift because really, we got to be honest, that's what people are here for. So we gave him a free copy of a couple cards. Those are fake codes, but we really gave him real codes that they could enter in. And then what I did was every email in the sequence uh, trained people on a certain aspect of the game. Now, I knew from my interviews and looking at the forums, people are very concerned about how to rank up in the game. So I wrote a nice clear heading about how to rank up, and then I broke it into sections like what is a good rank? How do you gain rank? Remember, they look for those subheads first, and then they go back and read the text. So I really wanted to make sure it was clear what that was going on. And then finally, what do you do at the end? Always have a call to action. So at the bottom of every email, we did a different uh, call to action, and only one, because if you put too many calls to action, they're not gonna do any of them. So each email would pick a different thing to do. In this case, I know that people really like to check the patch notes. So I did a special call to action of, hey, here's how you find patch notes. And by doing that, they kind of learn the, the community. They learn where to go to get patch notes. And every day with this autoresponder sequence, we sent them to do different things. It just depended on what was important for the studio to do. And then finally, we did our open loop. Now, remember the open loop is where we tell people what to do next so that they're excited for the next email. I like the graphic that the uh, graphic designer and marketing team picked for this one. It was a guy looking off into the distance, just like what we are doing. We're saying, hey, tomorrow, or in this case, we did a couple weeks, we're gonna tell you what to do, how to play the guild system because guild systems are very important for them. So that's why we kind of left this open loop to, to boost that open rate. So let me show you the results based on what happened when we implemented this autoresponder. Now, they have a great community manager and they've got an existing really good system going on. They've got Discord going. They actually had an email list before I started and they use Twitter a lot too. So they have some existing platforms. And what we did was, this was uh, for a weekend deal that we were setting up a bunch of marketing. So we had, a, uh, my first email was going out. We also mentioned it on Discord here. They've got one of the largest Discord servers in all of Discord. They are really killing it with Discord. And they've got Twitter too. Now, when all those marketing push went out, my emails went out in this Discord, I was checking and I was a little worried because here they had this weekend deal and I looked at their Discord and look at down there below. I was like, oh my God, here I am. I'm trying to prove how good email is. And when we look at it, look at all those emojis they have down there. Email doesn't have those emojis. Look, it's got 96 flame emojis. People are loving Discord so much, they put 96 flame emojis. And there's, there's 22 emojis of anime girls. Email doesn't do emojis of anime girls. Like, am I out of touch? Am I old? What's going on here? Email is still cool, right? How can I compete with Discord, right? I, I was worried, I was honestly worried. And then the numbers came back after the weekend deal. We kind of parsed the numbers. Here's the numbers. Um, email still killed it, still killed it. Like I said, email is the highest performing way to click in the universe. Nothing beats email in the whole universe. Even emoji girls, even if you get 22 emoji anime girls, that's still not as good as email. So email had twice as much as both Discord and Twitter combined when you look at the click percentage. It's out of the park. Email is just so good when it comes to getting people to click. It's just unheard of. Now, we did that autoresponder, and it sounds crazy, right? Like nine days of daily emails. And I thought it was a little crazy. I was like, I'm gonna take a risk on this. We're gonna do nine emails every day. And at the end of the nine days, when people newly joined the email list, I, I sent out a, a survey to them. And I said, I just asked them a question. How did you like those emails? Did, were they too much, too little, just right? Okay, 94% of the responders to this uh, survey said that the emails were great. 40% actually wished there were more than daily emails. They, I don't know if they wanted twice a day, what they wanted, they wanted for a whole year daily emails. I don't know what it is, but 40% wanted more. Uh, even, oh, I love email. I'm not gonna do more than a daily email. So just 
don't be afraid because people like multiple emails. 6% said, nah, that's a little too much, but I'm willing to take that because 94% of people on their mailing list love these daily emails. It was, it was amazing. So this GDC is a little weird this year. I can't answer questions live, uh, but I will answer your email or your questions on Twitter. Just tweet at me. Even if this is two years ago and it's like 2024 or something, uh, you can still tweet at me and ask questions about this presentation. I'll answer them. I love this stuff. I love to answer these things. I'll be honest to, to, to answer you here. Um, one last thing. Um, thanks for coming to my talk. One, one last thing, though. You know, you know what's going. Okay, I appreciate you coming to my talk. As a special gift, I'm going to give away a free copy of my book. It's all about how to do email marketing. It's a free copy. All you got to do is go to my uh, link right here. Click that big button. I don't think it actually works in, on, on YouTube. You just got to type that in. So howtomarketagame.com slash GDC20. And you just give me your email address. And thank you for joining my email list. In, re, in response to that, I'll give you this copy of this free book. I send out an email every week where I have different marketing tips and different uh, things that you can try. Uh, it's really helpful. I don't spam because I'm a very good marketer. Uh, but that's it. And thank you very much for your help. And I, I really appreciate your time.